On these two and a half acres of land at Okidai village in Asret sub county, Teddy uses agri technological innovations to add value to her business. I'm Mrs. Teddy Wabomba Wanzunula from northeastern Uganda, that's the Soroti district. I'm doing farming in a village called Okidoi. This is a Soroti sub county. It is uh, seven kilometers from Soroti town. And uh, the farm is called the Bego family farm. It is sitting on four acres of land. And uh, we deal in a lot of ventures. We are, we are, we are keeping goats. We have pigare, matoke, and uh, pineapples, apiare, and uh, lastly, we have the passion fruit section here and it's seated exactly on one acre. Welcome to Bego Family Farm and experience how innovativeness and irrigation technologies have enabled Tediwa Bomba to become the sole supplier of passion fruits in Asuret sub county in Soroti district. Passion fruits will always need water, that's why you say I have drip lines here. This one is now seven months. The whole farm began in 2012, but passion I began in 2014. And I, be, I chose a type called UPF 12. For us in Teso here, Teso is hot. So to manage to UPF 12 to come like this, we always first have a, we plant the, the yellow passion fruits, which is locally known here, and it's resistant to the sun. So when we plant the yellow passion fruits, we graft it with using these zions from UPF 12. These are, these are called the rootstocks, the indigenous type, from uh, local passion fruits, this is indigenous, soil, but here we use this yellow type. First of all, it is a resistant to pests and diseases. Two, it can withstand harsh conditions, like now here in Teso. Before you talk of uh, grafting, you first of all transplant the, 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 the rootstocks to where you will uh, graft them and it remains uh, growing from the, 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 the same position without disturbing it after grafting. First of all, it enables the plant to resist pests and, uh, and diseases because of that resistance from the, the local variety. And secondly, it also resists uh, the drought. It also uh, improves on the, the yield of the, of the fruits. And this is what we get in the end. Very beautiful passion fruit and very purple, very sweet. That type is flexible with the land here because you cannot bring a type grown in Bugisu Mountain and you put it in this sandy soil and sunshine. You have to have reasons to why you choose a certain type. I tried passion fruits from Mbale, but they didn't work out well because they are used to the climate in Mbale, and here it was different. Me, I'm very specific when it comes to picking seeds. You pick something which can be resistant when that type, type of, to the type of climate you have. It's not good to just pick. So I always follow the seed. Where can it do well? Can it work this way? And also I have friends who deal in passion fruits who I can consult when there is a problem. And they deal in the same. This one purely fits this. Because we've ever tried the other types and you see that because of our climate, they don't do like this. But UPF 12 is good. I'm an agri business farmer, so I always look for something on which gives more money and also I look at the market. Passion fruits are a marketable thing in Uganda and you will never lack a market for passion fruits. And on top of that, when you plant it, it grows very fast. 
if you from the time of planting to fruiting, it's just three months. The fourth month you are picking passion fruits. And if you maintain this garden well, you can pick passion fruits for three years. That's if you spray them very well, because sometimes the mistakes fashion fruit farmers make, they spray up and forget down. But for us, when we are spraying, you spray and reach where, that, where it enters the soil. And we, put, we emphasize on using manko zebu because a lot of passion fruit farms go down because of fungicide. And nowadays farming is, you can put luxury in farming. For example, when you want it to put too much like this, the way you are seeing these fruits of mine, you have to put some fertilizers which enhance too much flowering. So nowadays, the more you learn about something, the more you benefit about it. So it's no longer the other way where you would say we wait for natural way of flowering only. Once you maintain the fertilizer down there, we apply always the NPK and the can to bring this. Can gives you this purple color, very beautiful. So when you apply after every two months, me I, I keep applying and even local manure. So you get the whole thing, is the passion fruit is being fed away and there is no way you will not get what you want. I may even have to cover half of this farm with passion fruits because it's a two-way benefit to me. The flowers from passion fruits can feed my bees. That's why you see, I always keep things which are related. When I have passion fruits here, the bees will always be busy up here. And when they are busy, I get what? Better fruits. So I even plan to add more because my bees will move in this cool environment. It is all about knowing what you do and programming yourself. Because for example, when you are planting passion fruits, it is good to, when you are digging the, the holes, as you transplant them, you should use some ash down or any medicine which can kill vectors which can disturb the fruit. So sometimes locally we should not be lazy as farmers. You can go to a school and get a lot of ash in that you put one spade as you plant. If you don't have the money to buy maybe any, uh, the, the medicine which can kill vectors down there. You can just use the ash which is available in every home in every public place. Farmers are just lazy in, to leave the plants to get affected. So when you are planting, you put that in that down there, you don't have any problem. You have to pour ash or anything which can kill vectors. Then also maintaining. The way you look at this plantation, you always avoid leaves from touching the ground because when they touch the ground, they can get infection from the soil. You always leave the root alone to be down, but don't allow any branch to touch down. And we keep the spraying routine and pruning. Because when you leave leaves to be too much, sometimes flowering will be a problem. So they are, those are the things you have to keep. Have a timetable that after every two weeks, I do spraying. And then even we have some fly traps around. There are some, some bottles I will put, you always hang at them, so that any insect doesn't disturb the fruit. That's why you see the fruit is clean. What can only help you in agriculture is knowing what you want and what it is. Because for example, there are some pesticides which are dangerous to flies, which we cannot bring here e.g. rocket, striker, they are things we don't use here because of our apiary, they can affect. So when I'm choosing a pesticide to use, I have to have it on my head that I have what? Beekeeping. You just don't send anyone to buy for you, but I do it myself. And there are things we don't bring on this farm because some pesticides are dangerous. We don't do that. I'm very careful on that and I always do that purchasing personally because of the way I have a lot of ventures on the farm. So you cannot just send anyone that can spray for me. I don't do that. I'm using a shallow well for now and the water I have is uh, enough for the animals. Then on the side of uh, passion fruits, 
I will put a, a, a small valley dam for myself, which I collect all the dirty water from the village and it comes this side. I've trapped it right from the roadside through the neighbor's gardens. So I always use that water. It has a lot of minerals because it's rain water and it carries a lot of nutrients on the way. That's why me, I don't call it waste water, but it's gold to me. The problem we have in Africa, we don't want to, to employ technology to reduce on the laborers. Because me here, you get some people complaining, but you are carrying water using cans to water the what? The passion fruits. For me here, if we use the simple drip lines, which are connected to a tank, so watering is not done locally. Watering is done automatically just via, via gravity from the tank. So we only come here when we are spraying and maybe weeding. But once the canopy is covering like this, there is no much grass growing down here. So sometimes people complain because of labor, because sometimes they are not themselves at the farm. You know, when you are seated in an office and using money, you could pay even ghost laborers. So sometimes being there, it saves money and knowing what you do. Okay, when you plant passion fruits, it's always good. You think about when they will reach the, the peak of drought, like January and March. You should always target that March gets you with a canopy, which will help you to cover down. Because when March and Feb gets you with very young passion fruits, it will be a big job. But now, at this level, even if the sun comes, the little water we have when it comes down here, evaporation will be lowered because of the canopy. So sometimes it's good to sit down and plan before you do something. So most of the things done on the farm which become a problem to farmers, it is because they don't think about it before. You just fall into something because you've seen the seedlings, you just buy and go and plant. You don't check which month am I in. So sometimes it's poor planning. Uh, I used to have challenges in the beginning because I didn't know what to do, but as for now, I don't have many. There is no problem according to me. Now it is okay. No challenge. Hey, market is there. Labor, I involve myself, so I don't see any problem. Like now, passion fruits have a good price. Like right now, when we are picking here, we can make a bag of passion fruits. And that's 100 kilos, which comes to 500,000. You know very well that Soroti, as a region, we always, uh, passion fruits sold in the Soroti market come from Mbali and Kampala. So for me, who picks from here in Soroti, I am at a, at a better side. I don't put in transport. The market is always ready. As for Soroti, I'm very comfortable because passion fruits used to be brought from Mbali. New Vision took us to Holland for training and they took us to Makerere Agri Business to train us. And now we don't, we always, they teach us to have, to see challenges in farming and then you see how to work over it. Not to sit and just lament when things are going on. Whenever you see anything which would be a challenge, you get its solution. Instead of being that farmer who says they should help me. I cannot call the government to look for market when I'm here and the plant is here and the buyers are there. So sometimes the excuses are not good in the farm. I tell them to continue working hard and I mostly I call upon the younger people so that they join this business. Because it's a well-paying venture. It is not good to be just left there as people cry for jobs. Mostly the youth, many people have more time. Me as a teddy, I have a lot of jobs I do, but I spare time to do this. So I think for a younger man or a younger lady who is yet jobless now, if he came into this, can get better money and even maybe forget of job hunting. Because I have many people who are dealing in this. For example, Bashir Maiga went to Holland because of passion fruit. For those who want to begin this, they can always get my contact and we'll be discussing about this. For those who are interested. Because the market is so big, we cannot finish it.
And it's so ashamed for me to see passion fruits come from Kenya to Ugandan markets. Yet we have the soil and we can produce. In dealing in passion fruit is something I would ask every youth to follow. Because it is something very simple people should get used to being in their farms. Because what passion fruits need is you to keep checking. In that if there is any problem with one plant, you see how to eliminate it and avoid that. So th that's the only thing which I always do. I'm always here. For me, I believe life is about programming. We can even have five jobs as one person. But as long as you know that at this time I'm checking on my poultry in the morning, at this time I'm going to check on the pigs, at this time I'll be cross-checking on my passion fruits and my toke. What is finishing Ugandan is, is that we always don't organize ourselves. We waste a lot of time on non-productive things. But I mean, in my life I'm always programmed. I know the time to do this and the, because when you check many successful people, in Uganda, they don't own one job. So I'm a married woman. I know when to do my work at home. And I'm a farmer, I'm a business person. I'm a mother to my children. I will never meet, miss any visitation. It is all about programming. You can have even five jobs. And that's why Europeans are ahead of us. Because you get one person having three jobs. Yet for us in Uganda, somebody has one job and even reaches late. It is really a problem.